Hi guys, this is Don. I want to go over a problem that a couple of you have had questions about. Wondering uh, an easier way to develop these uh, frequency histograms and relative frequency histograms that you see in some of the uh, MyStatLab problems. Unfortunately, this particular problem and um, a few of them will require you to do what I call some manual calculations in that neither Excel or StatCrunch or TI or Minitab or any software package that I know about will actually give you the exact um, layout that uh, my stat lab here is asking for. They're, they're looking for a process and we can do most of the work uh, with the uh, software um, but we'll have to do a, a little bit of manual calculations. So let's first of all let's uh, work it in StatCrunch. I'm going to open up the data table and then open it in StatCrunch. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Give us a little more room here. The first thing we, we need to do, we're, we're told that we have this data and uh, we need to make a histogram using five classes. Okay, so our classes would be equal to five. And I'm going to um, relabel this class and put that as five. The next thing I want to do is to get some summary statistics for uh, our data and um, select our data which is in column VAR1 and I am going to hold the control key down and get the N. I don't need the variance, standard deviation, standard error, I don't need that. I don't need the medium. I do want the median. I do want the range, the min and the max, and I don't want Q1 and Q3. So there we've got the data. I click on compute and I'm um, given this table that has the summary statistics. It shows us the range is 21, our minimum value is 52, our max is 23, and we've got an N of 24. Now when you're doing a histogram and you uh, are given the number of classes and the range, you can calculate the width of the uh, the uh, classes by just dividing the range by the, the number of classes. And so I'm going to go to um, let me pause this. The thing I forgot to check is down at the very bottom here we want to store this output in a data table. And I'm going to click Compute. And here we've, we've got our data set up for us. Uh, our raw data of course is in column variable 1. The range is 21, the min, max, and n were given and I input that one section class. So the first thing I want to do is to come up with the width and I'm going to go to data, compute, expression, bring this up, click on build and we want to take the range, I'm going to double click that and I'm going to divide that by class, which is the uh, number, and click OK and call the width compute. And we come up with a width of 4.2. Now, when we're working with histograms, we don't want fractional widths, and um, the logic is usually to just round up so our width would be 5. So we've got our data that we need now. We've got the number of classes, we've got the width which is 5, and we've got the starting point. And you can calculate these intervals then uh, by just remembering that the starting point plus the width gives you the starting point of the second 
class. So that would be 52 plus 5 is 57, plus 5 is 62, plus 5 is 67, 72. And then the, because we're dealing with integers here, uh, whole numbers, uh, all we need to remember is that the upper limit for each class cannot duplicate the uh, or overlap the lower limit of the, the next class. So that would give us 56 and then add 5 to each one of those, 56, 61, 66, 71, 76. So that would give you your answers for that first part. And once we uh, have those, uh, we can go to graph histogram. We're just going to take our raw data there. And I'm going to, first of all, get frequency. Our bins start with our minimum value of 52. The width, we said, is 5. And I am going to um, overlay the value above the, the bar. And everything else I'm going to leave the same. So here we get our frequency distribution. And we've got our values there in each bin, 4, 5, 9, 5, 1. And I think if you compare here, um, we've got 4, 5, 9, 5, 1. And because we got our n over here of 24, we've got that final value as well. So here we've got the frequency distribution histogram. And but we can convert that, going to edit, and I'm going to make it a relative frequency distribution. Leave everything else the same and click on compute. And now we get our relative frequency distribution. It's, um, let me move this over here and close this. If we're looking at uh, the three options here, the one that looks like ours, the shape of it, is C. There's a little difference in the labeling on the bottom. It starts at 51, and ours starts at 52. And um, but other than that, um, it you know gives us everything we need. And if we blow this up a bit, you can see that's not really quite 51. So that that uh, it, it matches what we have there. The uh, frequency here is a little bit less than 0.4, uh, a little bit more than 0.2, and less than 0.2. So and that one is, is right at 0.2. So you can very quickly get your relative frequency distribution diagram that way. And answering the, the uh, final question, which class has the greatest relative frequency? Well, it's uh, this middle one. Uh, we labeled it 62 to 67, but in uh, and, and the actual one, we know that is 62 to, to 66. And which has the, the least is the one on the end, 72 to 76. So you can get your answers using StatCrunch.